Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the incredible, the amazing, the one and only Spider-Man art set. Coming with 2,099 pieces, which is a actual complete coincidence, this is a very unique style of art set from LEGO, and something that they haven't really ever done before. Utilizing the LEGO art branding, which typically is just restricted to mosaics, utilizing one by one studs, but completely flipping the concept on its head, and making it a mix between a 2D and 3D piece of art. This is the Lego Art Spider-Man set. It comes with a specialized printed tile stating the amazing Spider-Man and comes with a really nicely detailed, fully somewhat 3D Spider-Man literally crawling out of the comic book page with a movable head, articulatable fingers, and all sorts of really interesting details unlike any Lego art set that we have gotten today. And so, without further ado, let's jump right in to the review of the amazing Spider-Man art set with actual designer insights, because I did get a chance to interview the designer behind the set, so I'll be sharing some of the insights and thoughts from that interview in this review as well. And so, let's jump right in. All right, so this is the amazing Spider-Man art set. It retails for 200 US dollars, will be released very soon on August 1st, and comes with 2,099 pieces, which actually was a complete coincidence and nothing to do with our good friend Miguel. Now, this is unlike any other LEGO art set that we've had to date. Mostly, LEGO art is focused on purely just mosaics, which are really cool pieces of art in their own right, but mostly they just focus on laying down single one-by-one -one studs like the previous LEGO Marvel ones that we received back for the first few Lego art sets were pretty much just standard mosaics where you can see the Iron Man and Star Wars ones right here, but we haven't really gotten anything fully 3D from Lego art, at least for the superheroes line until now. This year, they seem to be experimenting a lot with different styles for Lego art. For instance, we got the Great Wave, which was branded under the Lego art theme. We got a set for Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night with Ideas, which is kind of like a Lego art set in and of its own right. And then even for future stuff, we're getting a modern art set which again pushes things outside the box of standard studs, but this is completely unique and is really special. It depicts Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, crawling out of the frame there, which is a really unique thing to do for a Lego set in particular, and it actually is copying the style of an actual comic page, so if you actually reference some of the older Spider-Man comics, this is what you can see. Now, the build for this was very interesting, and it was not very straightforward. First of all, you start with the back part of Spider-Man here, which honestly is the weakest part of the build for me. This just feels very flat and two-dimensional, where you have a lot of these wedges being used to have the shaping of his bottom right there, and then the leg kind of having a forced perspective look, where it's getting skinnier as it's kind of going off into the distance. But when you zoom out and look at it, I'm not super convinced with the way it's done. This almost feels way too skinny as the leg is kind of moving inwards into the background. The bottom itself feels very flat, funnily enough, which just feels not quite right. It almost just feels like a plane wing or something like that. But the set much improves when you move to the front and you start getting into 3D, where I almost feel like from this point down, it's actually a really solid model. So first of all, you'll notice that the head is actually at a bit of an angle. You can move the head around. The instruction manual states that this is actually supposed to make it look like he has different expressions. So if you look at it from this side, it looks like he's raising one eyebrow. When you look at it from this side, it looks like he's raising the other eyebrow, which I guess that kind of makes sense. I can sort of see it. You kind of have to squint to see it, but once you see it, I'm sure you'll be able to notice. The head itself is actually mostly 2D. These are interesting because these are fully printed. There were no stickers used for this part of the set whatsoever. Everything is a print for these webbing patterns as well as the Amazing Spider-Man logo text here. So no stickers, just full prints. And I think it works out pretty well. The head is actually actually a really nice part of the set, utilizing these kind of quarter dome pieces, which were first introduced for the NASA Space Shuttle, which you can see right up there, the NASA Space Shuttle, right on the top for Discovery right there. So it's really cool to see LEGO continue to use those fairly new pieces in unique and interesting ways. The hands themselves are built on mixel joints, which are very interesting, as well as clips. So you've got a full range of posability. Actually, my apologies, no mixel joints, just basically mostly clips here, and you can kind of angle them back and forth like so to make it look like he's actually gripping the side of the border for the art mosaic itself. And one of the most interesting details to me that honestly I haven't seen that
that many people talk about is the web, which may actually be one of my favorite parts of the entire build. As you can see on the background of Spider-Man, there is a full-on web being used in a combination of random technic elements and bars, which I just think is done in a really interesting manner. It really feels very organic in the way it's set up, especially when you have pieces wrapping around here, so you have some of these wires wrapping around the web itself. That is a really cool touch for me, and I feel like the spiders scattered throughout the display really just sell the look and feel of it. Now, one of the major complaints I saw people have about the set is the green background doesn't seem quite right. And I agree, maybe the green feels a little bit strange for the backdrop of Spider-Man. I know a lot of folks wanted it to be gray, but honestly, I feel like if it just had a light gray and dark gray backdrop, it probably would have been not that interesting. It wouldn't have looked as cool standing out on a wall, so green honestly doesn't bother me that much. One of the other cool things is that this still has the DNA of the LEGO art sets by laying down circular pieces in this stud-like fashion, but specifically, this is meant to represent the style of artwork they did for comics to save ink back in the day. This was a revolutionary technique. They talk about it in the instruction manual itself, which was actually very informative about comics in general and how they were made, but this essentially was a technique to have the ink blot in circles to save ink overall when you're printing so many different comics, and eventually it became a style of its own that people traditionally associate with comic book style of artwork, having these circular type patterns making up the actual design of the background, which I think is a really cool thing that they were able to actually integrate it into the set itself. Now, moving onwards to the construction and the building techniques, this entire module right here is actually using quite a clever bit of engineering to have this fully mounted at an angle, where you can see that the shoulders themselves are kind of rotated this way, which I think is a really interesting design overall. Of course, you have some unique studs in the side techniques being used here, blending with the curves and the nice studs on top building used for the lower arms. These are really interesting to see just the way they're constructed being so different and out there for a Lego build. And honestly, the fact that the bottom part is so good and so refined just makes this part feel that much more simplistic. Now, I got a chance to interview the designer behind this, which was super cool as part of the LEGO Ambassador Network. Again, mentioned the 2099 part count was a complete coincidence, but essentially the prompt of this set was to choose a comic book page and make it come to life, which honestly gets me thinking, what other iconic comic book pages could LEGO make? If this sells well, I could see them doing this for even like DC superheroes. A Batman one would be really cool. I would personally love to see it if LEGO were to make more sets like this, because I feel like while this is pretty out there, they actually accomplished it fairly well. And sometimes LEGO takes a swing and a miss and they don't really do a good job of making a really abstract set appeal to all, but I actually really like the look and feel of this. Yeah, this feels like it could use some work. I definitely am not fully happy with the back, but as you move onwards to the front of the build and actually kind of look at it from the top down, it feels very strong. And actually, this might be one of the best angles to look at it at because you can kind of feel like it is somewhat 3D with the head shaping. Looking at it from the top makes it look like he's crawling down the side of a building towards you. And you also don't really have to notice that the back of it is so flat. So honestly, my favorite viewing angle might be from the bottom right here, which is really interesting for a Lego set. Overall, I definitely feel like there's a lot of stuff that you can do and appreciate with the set with the building techniques the parts detailing the way it's put together it is as the instruction manual states unlike any other lego set that has come before and i absolutely will give them that this is something truly special and I personally really like it that LEGO Art is doing more unique and interesting things, especially because I do love the LEGO Art mosaics. I mean, I've made so many custom ones of my own, but I definitely feel like it is kind of time to give us something a little bit more unique for LEGO Art. I'm a little bit tired of all of the mosaics that we've gotten over time, which are very cool and very nice pieces of artwork, but the ones that interest me the most with LEGO Art are when they actually go outside the box. Like, the Rolling Stones logo was a really great step in the right direction to keep LEGO art sets outside of just the standard boxy grid, and then the LEGO Art Spider-Man set, which we're taking a look at right now, is just so much more special in the way that it's built. I am definitely a big fan of its construction. I hope that we get more stuff like this, but of course, that is just my opinion. I know this is a pretty controversial set. Some people are gonna look at this, say they don't like it at all, and that is totally okay. No worries about that whatsoever, to each their own. I, however, think that this is a really cool thing to be built out of LEGO bricks, and would love to see them do it more for more or comic book pieces. Now, finally, the one thing I do want to discuss is the price of $200. The price per part ratio is actually pretty good because obviously it includes a lot of these little bits and pieces of the little one-by-one -one round tiles. For $200, 
it's a lot. It's a lot of money to pay for this, but this is really big. It's actually surprisingly big. Like, this is my hand, and I have pretty big hands, but... This is my hand next to the entire thing, and you can see that this is a really large piece of art, like, basically the entire head is about the size of my hand, which is really putting things into perspective when you actually think about it and how the visual impact this has on a wall, even compared to a lot of the other LEGO art sets, like, if we look at a standard one, kind of around it, the standard size frame is just like this, which is still already pretty big. This is basically one and a half times the dimensions of a standard art set and also has a very unique visual pop to it. It really looks cool on your wall. It feels almost like a 2D drawing come to life. And so the scale of it is absolutely something very important to consider. I'm a big fan of the way this one turned out. I think it looks really cool on my wall alongside a lot of the other mountable Lego art pieces. But of course, just my opinion and very curious to hear if you think that the $200 price is worth it. Personally, I actually think it is. And I don't say this very often. This has been a year of very overpriced Lego sets. <clears throat> But overall, I really think that this is a really strong and solid set, especially for the price compared to some other LEGO superhero offerings that they've come out with this year. And I'm a big fan of the way that this one turned out, so definitely would recommend it. All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the Amazing Spider-Man art set. This is a really cool art set that actually I wasn't quite sure what to make of it when I first saw images of it leak online, but after having it in hand, I'm a big fan of how this all turned out. Of course, I do think there are some aspects that could have been done a lot better, especially around the back here. It does feel almost a little bit too flat, and they tried to do a forced perspective with the leg that wasn't quite working for me, but basically from this point downwards, I think it is almost perfect. Perfect. It is a really solid art set, and I hope that LEGO will continue to push the boundaries and do more interesting stuff like this. This was so much fun to put together and to really be able to see different building techniques being utilized to accomplish the unique angles and shaping of the build itself. And overall, I hope you enjoyed this review with Designer Insights. Thanks so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon, and bye for now.